Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. In the last 15 years I've kept all sorts of amazing invertebrates, but once again, having said that, not all of my purchases were a good idea. In this video I'm going to show you my top 5 invertebrates which I regretted buying, and why they're a bad choice. Once again, what we put in our tanks is very subjective, therefore like the last two videos, this video will be pretty controversial, and some of these will definitely surprise you. Number 5. Hermit Crabs I have no doubt that some of you will be shouting at your screens at the moment, saying you love hermit crabs, but I felt it was important that they had a place on this list. The reason for this is because so often I see new people being recommended hermit crabs and turbo snails as their initial cleanup crew. Both of them are excellent algae eaters, but the problem comes when you keep both of them together. The crabs will eventually eat your snails, and they reduce the snail's ability to successfully reproduce in the aquarium by eating their offspring. In my opinion, although hermit crabs are more interesting to look at, snails are by far the better choice for algae control, and I wouldn't have hermit crabs in any of my tanks again. Number 4. Sea Urchins Sea urchins are another fascinating creature which we can keep in our tanks, but the question is, do we really want to keep them long term? They're a bit of a double-edged sword because they're absolutely one of the best consumers of stubborn turf algae, which I've noticed is appearing more and more during the initial tank setup now that live rock isn't being used as much. There are three problems with them though. Firstly, they don't discriminate between desirable and undesirable algae, and they will absolutely decimate your coralline algae population. Secondly, many of them will carry small objects around the tank with them, which sometimes includes your expensive prize new frag. And finally, I can't tell you how many times I've reached in to grab something, only for an urchin to sneakily be hiding nearby just waiting to jab me with its spines. These spines can easily break off and if left inside the wound can cause an infection. Luckily, one of their upsides is they're pretty easy to catch and rehome if you no longer want them. Number 3. Reef Lobster If you're looking for an invert which will constantly hide, fundamentally destabilise your rock work, and will probably be the reason for a couple of unexplained deaths, then the Reef Lobster is for you. The reason I say destabilise your rock work is that when I first started, the concept of cementing rocks together was new to me, and they are more than willing to burrow underneath the rocks, eventually causing a collapse. Something else which has changed from when I first started is that they were widely accepted as totally reef safe, but that reputation appears to have gradually changed over the years to being less than friendly towards inverts, and downright murderous towards smaller fish as they get bigger. Finally, in my experience, reef lobsters are mainly nocturnal, and like to create a burrow out of view, making them virtually impossible to see. Which makes me question, why would I spend my hard earned money on something I rarely see? Number 2. Most Starfish This covers almost all starfish, with the exception of serpent starfish and most brittle starfish. The reason I say most brittle starfish is because those huge green brittle stars will eat your fish, and even your dog if it gets the chance. There are two issues with many of the other starfish. Either they eat coral like the chocolate chip starfish, or the reef safe ones such as the Fromia starfish or sand sifting starfish, both have some of the lowest long term survival rates in the hobby, with many of them being unethical to even collect or buy. For those of you that are watching this saying I've had one for many years, my question to you is do you know why you're successful? Because I bet you don't. In fact I'm pretty sure no one does. Feeding of many of these reef safe starfish appears to be a bit of a mystery, with many believing they are consuming microalgae, detritus and bacterial films. Serpent and brittle stars however, eat meaty foods and will readily accept almost anything you put in the tank, and can make amazing additions to almost any reef tank. Number 1. Bubble Tip Anemones the reason bubble tips have secured the number one slot on this list is because there's very few inverts which we intentionally introduce that can cause as much damage as one of these, and they almost never do what people want them to do. Most people buy an anemone to host their clownfish, but not all anemones host all clownfish. For example, in the wild, bubble tips usually only host tomato, fire, cinnamon and clarky clownfish, However, the majority of the clownfish which we keep are either Percular or Ocellaris. Which means if you're buying one of these as a home for your clownfish, you're setting yourself up for failure. That doesn't mean it can't be done, it's just far from guaranteed, and in my experience, I've never had a clownfish live in a bubble tip anemone. 
This is strange because clownfish are pretty fickle when it comes to moving in somewhere, and mine have tried to live in torch corals, duncans, xenia, and unfortunately my male platinum clownfish had a death wish and took up residence in a catophilia which did eventually eat him. By far the greatest risk with them however is they get pretty large and have a habit of randomly moving. They can live somewhere for years only to decide one day that it's time to move house. This can be done in two ways. Gradually, they move location across the rockwork, stinging everything, creating a path of destruction, or even worse, they let go of the rock altogether and float around until eventually they get blended by your power head. This is just the start of the problem, because if it isn't dealt with quickly, it can have significant detrimental consequences to the tank, even a total wipeout in some cases. This has happened to me twice over the years, and for some reason, they always like to do it in the middle of the night. Luckily, a combination of large water volume and that I discovered it reasonably quickly alleviated the worst of the damage. There are of course many other terrible choices of invertebrates which we can put in our tanks, such as sea apples or flame scallops, but as I've never purchased these myself, they didn't make the list. Let me know in the comment section below what your worst purchases are. In my last video, I mentioned updated perk on Patreon which has been very successful. For people in the UK that support the channel on Patreon, you're now able to select coral directly from the wholesaler. I post pictures before I visit and will then collect and ship them to you. This allows you access to a huge amount of coral which you wouldn't normally see. A link for this can be found in the description box below. Right, that's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. Have a good week and I'll see you next time.